Hi guys, welcome to Nerd Tech. Today we're going to be taking a look at the MSI X99A SLI Plus motherboard. This is a USB 3.1 motherboard. So what I'm going to do is I'll bring you in, we'll go over some of the features. So this is an LG 2011 version 3 board. It supports quad channel DDR4 up to 3333 MHz apparently. I've not tested that. It supports USB 3.1, which delivers speeds up to 10 gigabytes a second, which is twice the performance of current USB 3. This board features a Gen 3 M.2 slot, which is times four. And on this MSI board, it's a turbo M.2, which means it's capable of transfer speeds of up to 32 gigabytes a second. It'll be really good when the event technology that actually takes full advantage of that. That would be amazing. And this board is also capable of quad SLI and quad crossfire. Has an OC engine for more flexible BLK adjustments, base block. It also features USB steel power, which basically means that your five volt USB will run at five volt USB. This board also features a gigabit LAN, guard pro improved protection and power efficiency. Military class 4 top quality and stability. OC Genie 4, overclock in one second apparently. Not tested that, that'll be fun to try. So OC Genie is basically allowing you to change the base clocks. I think the options it gives you is 100 MHz, 125 MHz and 167 MHz. Uh, generally base clock changes to the previous generations of processors generally haven't yielded too much results. However, some of the later Skylake processors and Haswell E's allow you to change the base clocks, which is kind of back to old school overclocking before you could change the multipliers and stuff. Uh, this board does feature solid gaps, super fair eight chokes. So let's fire the box open and take a look. Normally the manuals and stuff sit on top of the box. Doesn't happen very often. Right, so what we'll do is we'll take a look at what else is in the box first. It's probably the easiest way to do this. So, driver CD. I'll download the lights from the website. Quick installation guide. Yeah, like I'm going to be reading that. Your, uh, let's see if we can get it so the light doesn't hit it. Your user manual. Kind of a thick user manual at that. Presumably that's because there's a few languages in there. Also, we have the IO shields. And let's see what else we've got here. So we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, six SATA, six gigabit a second cables. So it looks like there's three straight ones and three right angle ones. You have the connectors to allow you to connect your front dial, your power switch. LEDs etc. And then we have what looks like a 2 way SLI bridge for NVIDIA SLI. So let's have a quick look at the board. So we have the OC Genie button down bottom here. Have a power button and a reset button. You have your SATA and SATA Express ports. And you have your USB. We have a fan header. This is a PCI Express 16X. One, two, three, so there's four of them. 
However, the bottom two uh, look like they're just wired electrically to eight times. So these will be eight times instead of being 16 times, although they're in the 16 times front header. One times PCIe, one times PCIe. And your two 16Xs, obviously. Um, based on the cards I have, I have MSI R9 390s. They're three slot, three slot cooler cards. So, eh, it'll be interesting to see if you can actually populate your top two slots with them. Um, yeah, that might be interesting. Although, with the processor I'm putting in this board, I'm putting in an i7 5820K, so I only have 28 lanes of PCIe, so I'll only be able to run 16x and 8x. However, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. You've got your M.2 in here. Obviously we have a rather large LGA 2011 socket. Four DDR slot, DDR4 slots, four DDR4 slots on that side, giving you a total of eight DDR4 slots. You have the eight pin power connector up top here. 24 pin. We have a what looks like a USB 3.0 header, another USB 3.0 header. We ha also have eight SATA 6.0 ports. And then on the top, we also have a system fan header, CPU fan header, both of which are 4 pin. I think that pretty much covers kind of most of the things on the board. A BIOS, BIOS switch down here as well. Let's have a quick look around the other way here. See if I've missed anything. I believe this is the audio connectors here as well. Another system fan header. So Let's have a quick look at the I.O. ports. So obviously you have your audio ports. And this will be your gigabit NIC and USB 3.0. We have two USB 3.1 ports. And additional USB 3.0 ports. These are backwards compatible with USB 2.0. And we have the clear comms button along with two USB 2.0 ports and a PS2 port. Nice to see the PS2 port included. I was just having a quick look to see if the audio was separated on this board, like uh, most ports tend to do nowadays. However, it doesn't appear to be. Quick look at the back of the boards. Nothing much really going on in the back of the board there. So I'll zoom in just a bit further so that you can Pause the video and have a look if you so wish. That should pretty much the job. Well, that concludes it for this quick look at the MSI motherboard. Thumbs up if you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.